What's going on guys? This is Vinyl Boomer back with another Fallout 4 countdown video and today I wanted to go over 10 of what I think are some of the best and strongest heavy weapons in Fallout 4. Now before we start, this list is going to include both non-unique and unique weapons from Fallout 4's vanilla game and its DLCs. However, where appropriate, I will mention a few legendary variants that are worth seeking out. Also, this list will only focus on guns that are compatible with the heavy gunner perk, so powerful and large looking weapons like the gauss rifle or railway rifle won't be included on this list, but things like the minigun and fat man will. But with that further ado, I am pleased to present 10 of what I think are among some of the best and strongest heavy weapons in Fallout 4, starting now. Number 10. The Sergeant Ash Flamer. Now, I don't think it's unfair to say that the Flamer sucks. After all, it doesn't possess very high base damage, and upgrades that would improve damage actually end up reducing the weapon's range. Which, if you ask me, is pretty unfortunate. That said, I suppose the upside is that ammo is easily found at Saugus Ironworks, and is only slightly heavier than 5mm, meaning you should be able to carry plenty of this around in survival mode if you did decide to use the Flamer. It also doesn't hurt that one of the Flamer's unique variants from the Far Harbor DLC, which is the Sergeant Ash, possesses the kneecapper effect, and this can make dealing with various creatures you encounter across your playthrough much easier, as the kneecapper effect can be used to cripple an enemy's legs, which makes them totally immobile. This should allow you to make short work of things like Mirelurks and Deathclaws as you can pull the Sergeant Ash out to cripple their legs so they can't move, then move to a safe distance and switch to another weapon to easily take them out. Compared to other weapons that can also possess the kneecapper effect, the Sergeant Ash is usually a better choice as Flamer Fuel is incredibly light, and also is generally an untapped ammo source compared to something like a Pipe Pistol's 38 caliber. Ultimately, the Sergeant Ash is a great weapon for dealing with creatures, and if you want it, be sure to visit Acadia in the Far Harbor DLC and purchase it from DGen. Number 9. The Minigun Typically, the Minigun is the very first heavy weapon that you can encounter and actually use in Fallout 4. Considering that fact, and for what it is, the Minigun is actually pretty good. After all, it possesses a very high rate of fire, has fairly cheap and light ammo, and it deals enough damage to tear through most of Fallout 4's weaker enemies. The problem you'll encounter, though, is that the minigun has pretty low base damage, ranging somewhere between 8 and 11. While this isn't as much of a problem when going up against enemies with low damage resistance, it becomes more of a problem when you start to encounter enemies with higher damage resistances, as they can usually tank through two full 500 round drums from the minigun. This is further complicated by the fact that the minigun can only benefit from heavy gunner and bloody mess, which means at best you're only going to be able to double that initial 8 to 11 damage. However, if you can get a minigun with a legendary effect that increases damage, the minigun can become much more powerful. On the low end, things like the incendiary, mighty, or plasma infused effects can boost your damage quite a bit, while on the high end you can obtain explosive variants which are ridiculously powerful and scale fully from both heavy gunner and demolition expert. And obviously this makes them incredibly valuable and viable when going up against pretty much anything that the game throws at you. Obviously, you can get the minigun in Concord when you fight the Deathclaw, but I'd recommend you try to hold out and see if you can get a nice legendary variant. And specifically, try to go for an explosive minigun, because if you can find one, it's quite possibly one of the most overpowered legendary weapons in Fallout 4. Number 8. The Cryolator. Despite the rarity of cryocell ammo, the Cryolator as a heavy weapon is actually pretty good. Once it's fully upgraded, the crystallizing barrel will allow you to effectively double the weapon's damage, and also has the benefit of being compatible with both Heavy Gunner and Demolition Expert. So, like some of the other explosive weapons on this list, you can actually get some pretty nice damage scaling with this thing, and thus, it's highly recommended that you craft the crystallizing barrel in addition to acquiring both the Heavy Gunner and Demolition Expert perks. The problem and the reason that the Cryolator isn't higher on this list is because Cryocell ammo is difficult to find. Your best option is usually weapons vendors like Arturo in Diamond City or Cleo in Good Neighbor, and even when they have Cryocells stocked, the high value of Cryocells causes them to be incredibly expensive. 
However, if you can acquire enough bottle caps from water purifiers or growing and selling meat fruit, you may find that the costs are a little more negligible. Overall though, the cryolator is a good weapon assuming you can get enough ammo for it, and if you want this thing, make sure you're at least level 18, you're able to pick master locks, and head to vault 111 to pick the lock to the cryolator's display case. If you're successful, the weapon is yours. Number 7. The Party Starter Missile Launcher So, the Party Starter is a missile launcher with the Assassin's Effect, which allows you to deal 50% more damage to humans. Given how ubiquitous human-type enemies are in this game, ranging from raiders to gunners to even Brotherhood of Steel and railroad personnel, you should be dealing about 50% more damage to all of these types of enemies. Otherwise, and as far as the base model of the missile launcher is concerned, it's sorta of hit or miss. On the one hand, you're getting decent base damage before perks, clocking in at about 150, and you're also getting some cool customizations like the quad barrel, which increases the magazine size by four times, and the targeting computer, which allows you to fire rockets that home in on enemies. On the flip side, there's no real way to increase damage of the missile launcher other than through perks and bobbleheads, and the missile launcher's ammo is incredibly heavy, clocking in at about seven pounds per rocket. With these things in mind, you may find that there are better choices out there as far as explosive ordnance is concerned, and other weapons are also capable of the same base damage with considerably lighter ammo. Ultimately, if you want the party starter, go find Cleo and Good Neighbor and purchase it from her, because as far as regular and unique missile launchers go, I think the party starter is the best one available. Number 6. The Admiral's Friend Harpoon Gun the Admiral's Friend is a unique harpoon gun from the Far Harbor DLC that comes with the instigating effect, which allows the weapon to deal double damage to enemies provided they're at full health. Given that the Admiral's Friend has a base damage of 150, this is actually pretty awesome since you can potentially deal 300 to an enemy that is at full health. And when you have both the Heavy Gunner and Bloody Mess perks, I've seen the base damage reach as high as 345, meaning that you could deal as much as 690 damage or so in a single shot. While I suppose it's true that you do only have a magazine size of one and that can be frustrating, I think that's a fair trade-off if you consider that the harpoons that the Admiral's Friend fires are significantly cheaper than most other ammo types. Plus, when compared to similar weapons in Fallout 4 like the Missile Launcher, the harpoons that the Admiral's Friend fires are much lighter than the Missile Launcher's missiles, and they are also retrievable, meaning that you can basically get that ammo back once you shoot it, and the ammo itself is just overall lighter. If you're interested in the Admiral's Friend, make sure you have the Far Harbor DLC and then travel to the Far Harbor Settlement and purchase it from Alan Lee. Number 5. The Gatling Laser While it's primarily a heavy weapon, the Gatling Laser also has the benefit of being one of Fallout 4's best energy weapons as well. This is because stock versions are about on par with the minigun in terms of rate of fire and magazine capacity, but the Gatling Laser has much better upgrade potential in addition to having a superior and cheaper ammo source in the form of fusion cores. To give you some idea, the Gatling Laser's base damage is about 14, which already exceeds the maximum damage of a fully upgraded minigun, and that can be raised to 24 provided you equip the Overcharged Capacitor customization. From here, you can equip the Charging Barrels customization, which will bring the base damage up to 66 while reducing fire rates, making it quite a bit stronger than your standard laser rifle. And after some perks, you can get this thing to as high as 151 damage, which is incredible considering that you can fire about 500 shots before having to reload. These properties make the Gatling Laser have very damage efficient ammo, and if you play on survival mode, I would highly recommend you carry one of these around at all times if you've built around heavy weapons. Not to mention that it's generally easier to track down one fusion core for 500 shots rather than track down 500 5mm bullets for the minigun. While I'll discuss a few unique variants of the Gatling Laser later on in this video, if you're having a hard time finding a base model, be sure to visit Proctor Tegan on the Pridwin, as he usually has them for sale. Number 4. The Fat Man So, I'm sure this one isn't really that much of a surprise. After all, the Fat Man has the highest listed damage of any weapon in the game, clocking in at an astounding 468 damage before any perks, bobbleheads, or stat-boosting items. 
Like other explosive type weapons, the Fat Man can benefit from both Heavy Gunner and Demolition Expert, which can bring the weapon's base damage to as high as 1,836. Provided you obtain the Explosives Bobblehead, the fourth issue of Scav, and you acquire the Bloody Mess Perk, you can get the Fat Man's damage to as high as 2,214. And to give you some idea of just how much damage that is, some of the game's toughest enemies like the Mirelurk Queen, Mythic Deathclaw, and Annihilator Sentry Bots don't even have that much health. However, and if for some reason you still find that you're lacking in damage, you can acquire Nuka World's Nuka Nuke Launcher, which features roughly a 50% improvement in terms of damage, clocking in at about 693 before perks. After perks, I've gotten that damage as high as 3301, which is pretty insane and will ensure that you can pretty much one-shot most of the tougher DLC enemies from both Far Harbor and Nuka World. The only problem I can foresee you having with the Fat Man mostly has to do with ammo. After all, mini nukes are kind of rare, and if you're playing on survival mode, each one weighs about 12 pounds. With that in mind, it's probably best to save these or convert them into Nuka Nukes, provided you have the Nuka World DLC and the Nuka Nuke Launcher. Otherwise, and as far as acquisition is concerned, the Fat Man can be acquired really early on by going to the robotics disposal ground and finding it on top of some wrecked cars. And as far as the Nuka Nuke Launcher is concerned, you can acquire it and its schematics upon completing Capian Haystack and siding with Brad Burton over Sierra Petrovita. Number 3. The Iternos Gatling Laser The Iternos is a unique Gatling Laser that got added with the Nuka World DLC and is obtained during the Amoral Combat quest from one of the challengers known as the Rogue Knight. Upon defeating the Rogue Knight, you'll get access to this weapon to use during combat. What's special about the Iternos Gatling Laser is that it has the never-ending effect. However, unlike other weapons where the never-ending effect creates a weapon with a near-infinite magazine size, this creates a unique effect on the Gatling Laser that allows the Gatling Laser to have infinite ammo. Now, when you first fire, you may notice that you seem to consume ammo, but after that, you can pretty much fire indefinitely. Interestingly, and as a fun fact, the number that appears when you first fire indicates the number of remaining fusion cores that you have, which can be very useful if you use power armor. Otherwise, and like you might expect, infinite ammo is great for any difficulty, but can prove to be especially useful in survival mode, where ammo has to be a specific weight. By being able to fire infinite shots from a 3 to 4 pound fusion core, you'll never need to properly manage and identify the efficiency of your ammo again. But, even if you don't play on survival, this is a pretty awesome weapon to play around with, and you really should play through all of the amoral combat quests to get this thing if you can. Number 2. The Final Judgment Gatling Laser So, the Final Judgment is basically a Gatling Laser with the rapid legendary effect, which means it should fire 25% faster, while being able to reload about 15% faster. It's normally acquired by defeating Arthur Maxon during the Institute's Airship Down quest. However, you can also encounter Maxon during the Railroad's Rocket's Red Glare quest, provided you start a fight on the Pridwin's deck. So, as long as you side with either the Railroad or the Institute, you should be able to get your hands on this unique Gatling variant. What's cool about the Final Judgment, though, is that the Charging Barrels customization plays really weird with the Rapid effect and boosts fire rate far more than what's listed. The best part is you retain the Gatling Laser's crazy 66 base damage before perks and 151 damage after perks for what is essentially an extremely nice DPS upgrade. In fact, I think you would be hard-pressed to find many other weapons that possess this potential, as most automatic weapons cap out at around 30 to 40 damage or so before perks, and in the best case scenario, only have magazine size that are at or somewhere below 100. So if you ask me, it's definitely worth it to go for this thing, just for the crazy fire rate increase that you can achieve with the rapid effect. Otherwise, you could try to get lucky and get a rapid Gatling laser, but I think you'll find it's much easier to play through the game and acquire the final judgment instead. Number 1. The Big Boy Fat Man In my humble opinion, the Big Boy is the single strongest unique heavy weapon available. Then again, I suppose that isn't too much of a surprise given that the Big Boy is basically a Fat Man with a two-shot effect, which allows you to fire two mini nukes for the cost of one. 
As far as damage is concerned, the listed damage is only marginally higher, clocking in at about 486 or so. However, the actual damage output appears to be noticeably higher as a big boy with no perks, bobbleheads, or magazines can two-shot a Mirelurk Queen, while the base model usually requires three shots or so. However, like the base Fat Man, you can upgrade the big boy with the Nuka Nuke customization, which will enhance damage by about 50%. And you can also acquire all of the appropriate perks, like Heavy Gunner, Demolition Expert, and Bloody Mess, to basically quadruple your damage. Add in both the Explosives Bobblehead and the fourth issue of Scav, which both increase explosive damage even further, and I've seen the big boy achieve a listed damage as high as 3,343. Considering how powerful this thing could be, I'd recommend that you acquire it over the base model. Especially if you're playing in survival mode where each mini nuke and nuka nuke weigh about 12 pounds. That way you can get the best damage output relative to your ammo's weight. And with that in mind, and if you want the big boy, all you need to do is purchase it from Arturo in Diamond City. It's really expensive, but I'd say it's worth it for what is possibly the best heavy weapon in Fallout 4. Alright guys, thank you all for watching, and I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.